Good morning. Welcome to Littleton Street United Methodist Church. I'm Jason Brown, Director of Music, and uh, we are delighted to share this hour of worship with you. Uh, our online broadcast schedule remains the same this week, and uh, we have a short announcement week this week. Uh, the only thing on the list is that there are still spots available uh, for our Wednesday day camp for children at Camp Lystra. If you are interested in sending your child to our Wednesday day camp, uh, please call or text Mary Abbott, Director of Youth and Children, at 803-518-7315 or send her an email at mary at lsumc.net. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
join me as we recite together our historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Good morning. Today our scripture reading is the parable of the sower. And I have a book I want to share with you today. Let's listen. The parable of the sower. Jesus used parables to help us understand what he said. A famous one goes like this. A farmer sowed some seed which fell on the road, but birds ate it. Some seeds fell on the rocks but the sun burned up the young plants. Other seeds fell in the thorns, which choked the plants. But the seeds that fell in good soil grew up and produced a huge crop. The good soil is like a man who hears and understands God's word. You have people in your life who are trying to plant the teachings of God's love in your heart, but a heart that is hard and bitter isn't going to allow anything to grow, is it? There are other times when people hear the word of God and get excited about it, but that excitement fades away because our understanding is just too shallow. That's the way it is with the seed that fell on the rocky soil. Sometimes we hear the word of God and we believe what it says, but we want to continue to do the bad things that we're doing. That is like planting the seed with a bunch of weeds. And if you look around sometimes in your gardens or in your flower beds, we know what happens. Weeds take over, just like the bad things will take over. The last seed is the best because it fell on good ground. If you learn what you hear at church and Sunday school, the seed that God plants in your heart will grow. Your life will produce good fruit. And you'll be able to live the life that God created you to live. I love parables. And I really like today's parable. May God's word be heard and understood by us. So that we can live more and more like Jesus and be the good soil. Let's pray together. Our Father, help us to be like the good soil in our lesson today. Help us to listen to your word. And grow up to be the kind of person you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next Sunday. Please join me now for our morning prayer. Almighty God, we give you praise and thanksgiving today, knowing that you love us and are with us always. Lord, we pray for our church members this morning who are sick who have lost their jobs, and those who are grieving. Lord, you know all our concerns and provide us with everything that we need. Through the power of your Spirit, remind us daily your presence in our lives, so that when our lives seem disorderly and out of control, we may still find peace in you. Understanding that you have plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope, and the future. Lord, we are facing an unprecedented crisis in the world today, which have left us in a state of bewilderment. Therefore, help us to root our thoughts in prayer and grant us wisdom and hope during these times, so that we may not give in to despair, but find new and creative ways to live and show love to our neighbors, so that we may find new understanding of what unity equality, and justice look like in the midst of diversity so that we may become a community that reflects more of your love. Now be with us as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Even though we are not able to be gathered in the sacred space for worship together, the work of the church continues. If you would like to contribute to the good things happening at Littleton Street United Methodist Church, we invite you uh, to send a gift to the church either by the link that's in the comments section on your screen. Uh, you may text to give or you may send a gift via the mail to the church office.
Good morning. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is again from Matthew's gospel, this time from the 13th chapter, the first nine verses, and then picking up again at the 18th verse. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And then his explanation at verse 18 Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, as you plant seeds in our hearts through our time in your word, let them fall in the good places and bear fruit in our lives. For we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I want to invite you this morning to use your imagination just a little bit. To imagine that you are sitting along a lake shore somewhere. You may be out at Lystra. You may be out around Colonel's Creek or some of the other places around Lake Waterway where some of us have spent years. You may be up at Lake Junaluska, but imagine that you're sitting along the lake shore. Imagine as you're sitting there, you, you hear the birds. You watch them as they move and as they, they fly around. You feel the breeze. You may smell something. You may smell the flowers. You may smell the fertilizer somewhere. You may, may smell dead fish. But you smell the, the, the breeze moves and you smell and you see and you hear and, and you feel comfortable as you're sitting there. And then imagine you look across the way and you see a farmer, a modern farmer perhaps, with a tractor planting seeds as, as he goes across the way, as he, he does, goes up and down the rows. Now imagine what it would have been like if you were on the Sea of Galilee. And you were standing there and you were watching and you were looking around the Sea of Galilee and you saw Jesus come out of a house where you knew that he had been talking in and, and controversy with the Pharisees and in controversy with his family. And now it seemed like he was ready to get a little bit of rest. So Jesus came out. He took his seat there on the shore, but the crowds kept coming and coming and more and more people came. And finally, Jesus had to get into a boat and he sat in the boat and got a little distance. Now, what would he do? Would he sing, Lord, you have come to the lake shore? Uh, I, uh, he might have wanted to. Would he sing, shall we gather at the river? I, who knows? But rather, Jesus looked out. He saw the crowd and he began to tell them parables. Matthew says he told them many parables. But the first one, as he told it, he was looking. And many commentaries imagine that he looked across the sea and he saw that farmer with a bag in his hands, pulling the seed out and broadcasting it, throwing it everywhere he, he could. Others believe that the other method that was used in Palestine might have been what he saw, where the, the seed was tied in a bag that was tied onto the back of the farm animal, and there was a hole in, in the bottom corner of the bag. And as the farmer walked his animal up and down the way, the seed came out dropping from the bag in, into the, the places where he was planting. But in any case, the seeds were being spread as Jesus looked out. And I like to imagine him watching and seeing that farmer and then looking at the crowd and then beginning to tell the parable. A sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Can you imagine what it would have been like? You can imagine the seeds flying. Uh, in most of our places, we can see the crows and some of the other animals that again and again and again come and, and eat as we, we cast things out. And I imagine somebody in the crowd was looking and seeing that and saying, Look at those birds. Isn't it wasteful? to throw those seeds where those birds are getting them. But the sower kept sowing. And Jesus kept teaching and telling the story. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly. And since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and they withered away. And somebody in the crowd was looking as the sower was sowing the seed and seeing where they were landing on the rock. And now, this was not just bare rock. Apparently, in Palestine, in these places, there are places where there is a limestone shelf with just a small amount of dirt covering it. So the seeds would begin to grow, but they wouldn't have much place for the, the roots to go. And somebody was probably in that crowd saying, look at that. I know that there's rock right there. That seed is not going to grow. But the sower kept sowing. Jesus kept planting seeds in the life of the crowd. 
And then some of the seed, Jesus says, fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked them. And that's so easy to imagine as you look. And somebody in the crowd was looking and, Jesus, and seeing the, 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 the seeds going. And look at that. There, there are briars right there. There are all sorts of brambles and thistles. Nothing's going to grow in there. What a waste of seed. But the sower kept sowing. Jesus kept scattering seed among the crowd. And then Jesus said, other seeds fell on good soil. Brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. What we don't understand when we read that originally is that what Jesus is talking about is miraculous growth. Normally the output from the seeds that were planted would be in the single digits. And here Jesus is talking double and triple digit yield as the sower sows. The extravagant work of the sower is rewarded by the extravagant growth of the seeds that are planted. Now take a minute, imagine looking around the crowd. Look at the people who are there. Over in this corner are some people who just came because that's where all the crowds were for that day. All of the crowds were there because Jesus was there and Jesus was the one who was, was the center of, of all the, the raves and all the crowds. And they were there because that was where everybody was. And they were listening, but what Jesus was saying wasn't really hitting them. It was like it was hitting that path and was gone almost immediately. And some of the people who were in that crowd were like that rocky soil. It's, it sounded so exciting to hear Jesus talk, to hear the other parables that he told, to hear about the kingdom of heaven, to hear about the good news of God's love, and they would get so excited until something went wrong or until time went by. And all of a sudden, their roots, which hadn't had an opportunity to grow, would be gone, and they would be gone. One of the churches that we served a number of years ago loved to tell the story of the family that came to the church and were so excited and so enthusiastic about the work that they could do in that church and the way that God was moving among them, and they wanted to be baptized and join the church. But because of their backgrounds, they wanted to be baptized by immersion. So Mr. Towery arranged for everybody to come to his home where there was a, a nice, beautiful pool and a nice place for a picnic. And they were going to have a baptism, and then they were going to have a party with hamburgers and hot dogs, and the whole church family was there to celebrate. And everything went beautifully. And then the next Sunday, that family wasn't at church. The next Sunday, that family wasn't at church. Their roots withered, and they just disappeared. But the church kept sowing seeds, just as the sower in Jesus' parable kept sowing. And the crowds kept listening and learning. And some were like those among the thorns. They heard, but in their minds they were worrying, oh, what is the COVID virus going to do to things? How are we going to get by? The economy is horrible. How am I going to feed my family? All of the cares of life were so deep in them that the seeds that Jesus was sowing were choked out. But the sower kept sowing. Jesus kept teaching. The crowds kept listening and learning. In one of our churches, we had a wonderful lady who sat on the very front row on the left side and always grinned during the sermon. She would nod and she was grinning. I was not feeling comfortable. I could look over and she'd be grinning and nodding and I'd feel so much encouragement until that Sunday when I looked over there at Miss Mamie and Miss Mamie's face fell and her, her, had a, she had a panicked look on her face for a moment. And I thought, oh no, what did I say? Something must have been wrong in this. And then I was going to ask her after church, but she disappeared. And I thought then, oh, I really must have said something. I really must have done something wrong. 
I couldn't wait for the next Sunday, but the next Sunday morning when she came in, I asked her, I said, Miss Mamie, what happened last week? And she said, what do you mean? I said, I was preaching and you were smiling and all of a sudden your face fell and then you disappeared after church. Did I say something that offended you? She said, oh no, that must have been when I remembered that I had left the pot roast in the freezer and I had to run home as soon as church was over to get it out. The cares of the moment, the cares of the world for that time had choked out what she was doing. And so it happens. We can be like the soil where it's like on the path where the birds come and take any seeds that are planted and we don't hear them. Or we can be like the rocky ground where we get excited and get enthusiastic and it fades away in the first sign of trouble. Or we can be like the seeds, we can be like that thorny ground where the soil is good but there's no chance because of all the other cares of things really growing. Or we can be like that good soil where the seeds fall and they grow and, and things happen and God begins to work and, and the, the, the yield as is, is things happen is a hundredfold or even thirtyfold, a miraculous yield in our lives and in the life of those that we meet. But there's something that worries me about this parable. It's about the disciples because as we read the, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus had been teaching them. They had heard so much of what he was saying. They'd seen all he had done. After all, this is the 13th chapter, the very middle section of Matthew's gospel. And the disciples still don't get it. They say, why are you teaching in parables? They ask him what it is that he means and he has to give to them that explanation that begins in that 18th verse about what kind of soil the seeds were landing in. And I suspect when he was teaching them, he was wondering, well, why weren't they paying attention? And he began, as he was talking about the soils, he might have been actually tilling some soil, if you excuse a kind of a jumping metaphor, tilling the soil in, in the hearts and minds of the disciples so that they wouldn't be like that path where the seed bounced off. Or that shallow soil where things didn't stay but withered. Or so concerned that with the things around them that they missed and the things that were important were choked out. Because I think as they learned, they grew and the seeds that he planted changed them as they began to take part more and more in his ministry to the point where after he ascended they were able to get out and they were able to spread those seeds and teach and share themselves with that miraculous growth that means that we are here today because of the seeds that were planted and the seeds that were planted from generation to generation and that's what we do here at Littleton Street this is why we work so hard to make sure that things are going on. This is why we have the programs that we have, the online music, the online uh, prayer time, the, the, the things that are happening with our young people. All of these are ways of preparing soil in hearts and minds of people so that God can work and the seeds that are planted can grow. And we can all become closer and closer to the people he's made us to be. The yield that he calls from us is yield of miraculous proportions. But we keep on doing what Jesus did. He keeps sowing the seed. We keep reaching out, sowing seed, offering hope and love and grace. Good news of God's power in our world. And the cares of the world are still there, but we know the one who is in control. And God continues to work and move and guide and bless. Let's pray. First, Lord, we ask you to make us good soil. 
that as you sow your word in our hearts and lives, it might find a place to blossom and to grow. But Lord, you've called us all also to sow. In good times, in bad times, through all that happens, you call us to plant that seed, to sow those seeds of your love and your grace. Don't let us get discouraged, but help us to remember that as we plant the seeds, you make them grow. And the harvest is a hundredfold, or seventyfold, or even thirtyfold but miraculous because of your extravagant love. In Jesus' name, amen. As we go out, let me invite you to remember those people who have planted seeds of hope and love in your life. And to remember those people around you in whose lives you can plant seeds of God's grace, God's power, and God's love. And let's go forth together, planting those seeds, receiving those blessings, offering the love of God and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit goes with us now and forever. Amen. Thank you.